Hi, welcome back. This is the part 4 of the introduction to Quantlib. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Quantlib analytical method to place a vendor option. We will model the underlying stock movement by geometric Barnian motion. To begin with, let's reveal the parameters to place a core option. By definition, a core option gives the holder the right to buy the stock at the maturity day T for the strike price K. So at the maturity date, the payoff of the core option will be zero if the future stock price ST is lower than K. And the payoff will be ST minus K if the future stock price ST is higher than K. What we are interested in is that at the time we buy the option, how much does it worth? Basically, if the probability of ST higher than K increase, then the core option will worth more. Firstly, the option price is higher if the current stock price S0 is higher. And if the strike price is lower, then the option price is higher as well. Secondly, the later the maturity date T or the higher the volatility sigma, it will increase the probability of ST higher than K and therefore increase the option price. Thirdly, the increase in the interest rate R will lower the present value of the strike price effectively and so it increases the option price. And finally, the increase in dividend yield will lower the present value of the expected future stock price effectively and so it decreases the option price. In summary, to price a core option, we need to specify these parameters S0, K, Sigma, T, R, and Q. Now, to price an option in Quantleap, let's take a look what objects we need to create. We can find the object for the vendor options. Click the option object. Expand the inheritance diagram. Select the what access option. And the vendor option is here. To create the vendor option, we need to create the payoff object and also the exercise object. We can choose various kind of payoff object like binary payoff or vanilla payoff or others. Let's choose the vanilla payoff in our example. To create vanilla payoff, we should specify the strike price and whether it is a core option or a put option. For the exercise object, we can also choose various kinds of exercise objects like American or European. Let's choose the European exercise object in our example. To create the European exercise object, we should specify the maturity date. Now, after specifying the option payoff and exercise type, next we should specify the pricing method by calling the set pricing engine within the Venita option.
Let's see what pricing methods are available in Quantlib. Again, we can choose various kind of pricing method like the analytical method or Monte Carlo method. Let's choose the analytical method in our example. To create the analytical object, we should first specify the stock movement process. In our examples, let's use the most common geometric binding motion process, also called the bradshaw merton process in Quantlib. To create the bradshaw merton process, we should specify the stock quote, the dividend yield, the interest rate, and the volatility term structure. For the stock quote, we can choose different types such as simple quote or composite quote or others. Let's choose simple quote in our example. In here, we can specify the current stock price. For the dividend yield and the interest rate, we can choose different construction types such as flat yield curve or interpolate zero curve or others. Let's choose the flat yield curve in our sample. And here we can specify the current date, the dividend yield or the interest rate and the date count convention. For the volatility term structure, we can also choose different construction types such as constant volatility or implied volatility or other term structures. Let's choose the constant volatility term structure in our example. In here, we can specify the current day, the calendar for a specific exchange market, the volatility and the date count convention. Now we have constructed the whole vanilla option object. The next step is to look for the function within the option object to do the pricing. In Quantlib, all the financial instruments inherit member functions of the instrument class. And the instrument class has the function NPV, which can do the pricing job. Before we do the programming, let's set up the test case first. From the internet, we can find some option calculator to calculate the vanilla option. Let's input these parameters for the option pricing. And here is the calculation result. Okay, now let's do the real programming job. 
in Visual Studio create a new project for the console application. Select the Visual C++ Win32 console application. Give this project name, option pricing. And then put this project into our work folder. Click next. Select empty project and then uncheck security development life cycle check. Press finished. We need to tell the compiler where to find the include path and the library path of the quantlib and the boost library. Select VC++ directories and add the include path and the library path there. These paths can be found in your work folder that you have created in the previous tutorial. Next, please add the following flags in the C++ preprocessor setting. After the new empty project, is created. Let's add the source code into the project. Right click the source file folder, add a new item, and name it optionplicing.cpp. The source editor windows is now opened. At the beginning of the source code, we should put the quantlib header and the directive to disable some warning message. Also, we should put the main function as the starting point of the code. Now let's build all the objects from the bottom to the top. Firstly, we may specify the calendar, the date count convention, the current date, and the maturity date. Next, let's specify the option type, the current stock price, and the strike price. Next, let's specify the dividend yield, the interest rate, and the volatility term structure. Now, we have finished specifying all the parameters that are needed to price an option. We can move on to construct the rest of the objects. First of all, let's construct the stock code object and then wrap it by the pointer and the handle. And then, let's do the similar coding for the dividend yield, the interest rate, and the volatility term structure objects. Then let's move one level up 
and construct the stop movement process object. Then let's construct the option exercise object and the payoff object. Then at the highest level, let's construct the option instrument object. Lastly, let's construct the pricing engine object and assign it as the pricing engine for the option. Now we have finished constructing all the objects. Finally, we will output the result by calling the NPV function. We are ready to build the code. Let's run the code. As you can see, the result match with the one calculated from the online option calculator. That's all for this part of the tutorial. We can see that we need to build a lot of objects in order to price a vanilla option. It looks like complicated and you may question why. It's because Quantlib want to price different kinds of options by using different methods. Instead of just pricing the vanilla option, just using an analytical method as what we have done in this tutorial, by breaking down the option object into a smaller component, we may then price different kinds of options by using different methods. This will be the topic that I will talk about in the next tutorial. See you next time.